Hi everyone, welcome back to Singing How to Study Chinese. This is HSK Level 1 course, and I'm your teacher, Ronnie. Today we are going to learn Lesson 6, 第六课, 我会说汉语, 我会说汉语, which means I can speak Chinese. Okay, now let's first move on to our warm-up part. There are two groups as, you, as usual. First is the picture and there are some new words. So first, let's focus on the new words. This one, first one is Mama. Mama. Read up to me, please. Mama. Mama. It means mother. Mother. Okay, next one. Han zi. Han zi. It means Chinese character, Chinese character, not the language, the word we say, we, we write, okay, Chinese character. Next one is Zhong Guo Cai. Zhong Guo Cai. Zhong Guo, we already know, it means China. And the Cai is today's new word. It means dish or cuisine, dish or cuisine. Next one, Shuo Han Yu. Shuo Han Yu. Shuo means speak, speak. And Han Yu means Chinese, the language. So Shuo Han Yu is speak Chinese language. Next one, Xie Han Zi. Try to guess what does this mean? Xie is a verb, and Han Zi we learned here, it means Chinese character. Xie Han Zi actually means writing Chinese character. Okay, write Chinese character. Last one, Zuo Zhong Guo Cai. Zhong Guo Cai is Chinese dish. So, Zuo Zhong Guo Cai. Zuo means make something. So, Zuo Zhong Guo Cai is cook Chinese dish. Okay, try to fill in the blanks. I will give you 10 seconds, okay? Okay, time's up. Let's see the answers. First one, mama. Mama. Which one can be mama? Which one? I think the most obvious, obvious one is F, right? F. And I think D and E can be mama too. Maybe, right? Maybe. And let's see, Hanzi. Which one is Hanzi? A, obviously, A and, and which one? D, D, she is writing, she is writing, okay, she is writing. Next one, Zhong Guo Cai, Zhong Guo Cai, which one is? B, B is Zhong Guo Cai. Next, Shuo Han Yu, speak Chinese. Yes, C, they are saying Ni Hao to each other. And next one, Xie Han Zi is D, obviously, and Zuo Zhong Guo Cai is E, cooking. Okay, now let's move on to our first text. So first, new words as usual. First, Hui. This word, He Wei Hui. The initial He, the final Wei, and the tone is the first tone. He Wei Hui. Read after me, please. Hui. Hui. It means can be able to it is a modal verb so whenever you want to say you can do something in chinese okay then you can use hui and plus plus a verb okay hui something for example can speak chinese in the topic today's lesson's topic is 我会说汉语. hui shuo, shuo means speak Hui Shuo Han Yu means can speak Chinese. Okay, this is Hui. And the negative form of this Hui is to put a Bu before it. And uh, how to read it? It is Bu Hui or Bu Hui. It is Bu Hui because of the tongue sandy of Bu. Tongue sandy of Bu. When Bu is before a Fourth tone syllable, it will change to second tone. Bu hui. Okay, this is hui. Next one is shuo. Shuo shuo shuo. 
the initial is shi, the final is wo, and the tone is the first tone. So put them together. Shi, wo, shu. Read after me, please. Shu, shu. It means speak, to say, to speak, to say. So speak Chinese is shu han yu. Han yu. Han yu is Chinese. Shu han yu. Shu han yu. Okay. So Americans they speak English, right? So English is ying yu in Chinese. Ying yu. Okay, ying yu. Read after me, please. Ying yu. Ying yu. Ying yu. It means English. So how to say speak English? It is shuo ying yu, right? Shuo ying yu. So anything you wanna say, you can put the thing after shuo, okay? After shuo, shuo plus a verb, shuo plus a noun, okay? So try to say Chinese speak Chinese. Try to translate this sentence. Chinese speak Chinese. It is. 中国人说汉语, right? 中国人说汉语. 中国人, 人 means human person, okay? 中国人 means Chinese people. Chinese people speak Chinese is 中国人说汉语. Okay, American people speak English. Try to translate this sentence. American people speak English. It is, how to say American? We've learned it before. It is, 美国人, 美国人, okay? 美国人说英语, right? 说英语, we've learned it. 美国人说英语, 中国人说汉语, okay? This is about 说, speak, to say. Last one is, 妈妈. Mama, it means mother. And the second ma is a neutral tone, okay? We've learned the, about the rules of, the rules of what? The rules of neutral tone before. And there are many words like kinship. For example, mama, baba, yeye, nai, nai, okay? This is mama, mother. So now let's read. From the start, each for twice. Three, two, one. Hui, hui, shuo, shuo, mama, mama. Very good. Now let's move on to our text. I will read and please listen carefully about the pronunciation. Ni hui shuo han yu ma? Wo hui shuo han yu. 你妈妈会说汉语吗? 她不会说 OK, let's see sentence by sentence. First one, 你会说汉语吗? OK, let's see the structure. First one, 你 is the subject of this sentence, right? 你, you. 会说 means can speak, right? Can speak, we just learned in the learned these two new characters in the new words and han yu means chinese the language and ma is the is the interrogative pronoun interrogative particle okay every time we see a ma we can we can see it is a question right question so we can see here the structure the subject plus the verb plus an object and plus a ma is the question. So we can see in Chinese, most of the questions are, has the same word order of the declarative sentences, right? It is the subject plus the verb plus the object. Okay, 你会说汉语吗? It means, can you speak Chinese? Next sentence, 我 会说汉语, 
I can speak Chinese. I can, okay? I can. So, 我 the subject plus 会 plus 说 can speak and plus the object 汉语 I can speak Chinese. Next sentence. 你妈妈会说汉语吗? 你妈妈 actually is 你的妈妈, your mother, right? But because mama is a kinship to me, so we can omit the here. So we just simplified 你的妈妈 to 你妈妈. Okay, 你妈妈 is the subject of this whole sentence. And 会说 can speak, 汉语 can speak Chinese. Can your mother speak Chinese is the meaning of this one. And B answered, 她不会说. Okay, this is the negative form of 会, with 不会, which means can't. She cannot speak. She cannot speak. Okay, now let's try to read it from the start. Okay, read after me. 你会说汉语吗? 我会说汉语. 你妈妈会说汉语吗? 他不会说. Okay, now let's try to read it in rows. I will be A and you will be B, okay? Three, two, one. 你会说汉语吗? 你妈妈会说汉语吗? Okay, let's switch the row, okay? You will be A, I will be B. Three, two, one. 我会说汉语. 他不会说. Very good. This is the text one. Now let's move on to text two. Okay, we can see there are four new words. First one is 菜. 菜. We've seen it in the warm-up part, which means dishes and cuisine. So, 菜, read after me. 菜, 菜, 四爱, 菜. The initial is 四, and the final is I. The tone is fourth tone. And try to say Chinese dish. Chinese dish. Still remember the word in the warm-up part? Chinese dish. It is 中国菜. Yes, 中国菜. Okay. Try to say American dish. American dish. 美国菜, right? 美国菜. Okay, very good. So we can see which country's dish you want to say. You just need to put the country before 菜. Before 菜. Okay, so how to ask about which country's dish? Which country's dish? Do you remember how to say which? We've learned it before. Which is na, okay, na. And country is, country is guo. So which country's dish is actually na guo cai, okay? Na guo cai, read after me. Na guo cai, na guo cai. Okay, this is the question about how to ask which country's dish. So how to say which country's dish do you eat? Which country's dish do you eat? We said the word order of question in Chinese are mostly the same as the declarative sentences. So first word should we put at the beginning of the sentence? It is the subject, which is you, right? The person. I am asking about which countries, which country's dish do you eat? So I will put you at the beginning. So, ni. And then we need a predicate. We need a verb, which is eat, right? How to say eat in Chinese? It is 
吃吃一吃 ，OK。你吃哪国菜 ？Is the right answer？ 你吃哪国菜 ？It is the question about which country dish do you wanna eat？ 你吃哪国菜 ？Now let's try to answer this question. I eat Chinese dish. This one is real easy. I eat Chinese dish. This one is 我吃。中国菜 ，OK， 我吃中国菜。I eat Chinese dish. And what kind of, um, any kind of dish do you wanna replace? You can just put in the country, OK? Put in the country. For example, 美国菜 ，OK. This is about 菜 Next one is 很喝恩很 Read after me, please. 很很 it is a third tone word and it is a adverb. Adverb. It actually is an adverb of degree, which means very, very, quite. So anything you wanna say and wanna describe the degree of it, you can just put hen before the adjective. For example, how means good. How means good in Chinese. When I want to say very good, then I can just say 很好 I put 很 before 好很好很好 very good. So this is the structure of it. Put 很 before the before the adjective. Okay. Now let's move on to next. 好吃喝熬好 which I said it means good, and 吃一吃 means eat. It eats good, which means it tastes good, and it means the thing is delicious. So it is an adjective, which means delicious, tasty. 好吃 read after me, please. 好吃好吃好吃 delicious. So try to say very delicious, very delicious. Very delicious is 很好吃 right? 很好吃 We just need to put 好吃 after 很 okay? 很好吃 And if I want to say not delicious, how to say that? The negative form of it, we usually use 不 right? 不 this word. So we just need to put 不 before 好吃 Then it is 不好吃 which means Not delicious. Not delicious. Okay. Try to say Chinese dish is very delicious. Chinese dish is very delicious. 中国菜 is the subject, so we put it at the beginning. So 中国菜很好吃。中国菜很好吃 is the right answer. Try not to say 中国菜是很好吃。Some students would like to say this sentence in this way, like to put "shi" inside because they think the sentence neither needs a verb as a predicate. But in Chinese, the adjectives can act as a predicate predicate too, so we don't need "shi" here. Okay, and I will talk about it in details later in the language point part. So now let's move on to next word, which is "zuo." 滋沃，做。The initial is 滋 and the final is 沃 and the tone is the fourth tone. Read after me, please. 做，做，做 It means to make, to produce. So cook is 做菜 It actually is make dishes, make cuisines. So 做菜 is cook. 做菜 cook. So Cook Chinese dish is 做中国菜 and cook American dish 做美国菜 Okay, try to ask a question. Cook what dish? Listen carefully. It is not cook which country's dish. It is cook what dish. Cook what dish? Try to think about the interrogative pronoun "what" we've learned before. So the answer is 做什么菜什么 Okay, 什么 
Hence the interrogative pronoun we've learned before, which means what? 什么? Okay, 什么? And ma is the neutral tone. Please pay attention to it. 什么? Read after me, please. 什么? And cook what dish is 做什么菜? 做什么菜? Okay, this is all for text tools. New words. Now let's try to read it from the start. Each for twice. Three, two, one. 菜, 菜, 很, 很, 好吃, 好吃, 做, 做. Okay, now let's move on to the text. I will read it for once. Please listen carefully. 中国菜好吃吗? 中国菜 很好吃 你会做中国菜吗? 我不会做 OK, let's see it sentences by sentences OK, first sentence is 中国菜好吃吗? Without this ma, 中国菜好吃 is an declarative sentence which means Chinese dish is very delicious and if I put this ma after it, then this becomes a question, which is, which means, is Chinese dish delicious, right? Is Chinese dish delicious? Okay, next, be answered. 中国菜很好吃. 中国菜很好吃. Chinese dish are very delicious. 很好吃, 很好吃. We can see in this sentence, there are no verbs here, right? verb here. Some people like to put shi here because shi means to be, right? Be. And in English, Chinese dish is delicious. There is an is here. So some students like to put shi inside, but there is no need to put it, okay? No need. Just say, 中国菜很好吃, very delicious. Okay, next sentence, 你 会做中国菜吗? 你会做中国菜吗? 会 here appeared again, which means can be able to do something. Okay, 会做 means can cook. So can you cook Chinese dish? Can you cook Chinese food? Okay, 你也会做中国菜吗? A question. B said, 我不会做. I can't. I cannot cook. I cannot cook. Okay, now let's read it from the start. Read after me, please. 中国菜好吃吗? 中国菜很好吃. 你会做中国菜吗? 我不会做. Okay, now let's Let's read it in rows, okay? I will be A, you will be B. 中国菜好吃吗? 你会做中国菜吗? 你会做中国菜吗? Okay, very good. Let's switch the row. You will be A and I will be B. Three, two, one. 中国菜很好吃。我不会做。Very good. Excellent. Now let's move on to text 3. There are more new words than before. Let's just see. First one is 写写写。the initial is C, the final is Y, and the tone is third tone. C, C, it means to write, to write. So if you want to say write anything, just put the thing after C, after C, okay? Next one is Han, Zi, He, An, Han, Zi, Yi, Zi. Read after me, please. Han, Zi, Han, Zi. It means Chinese character. Chinese character and Chinese language is 
Han yu, not zi, han yu. So as we can see, zi actually means character, which is the third new word. Zi means character word. Han zi, zi. Okay, now try to say, write Chinese character. Write Chinese character. Write Chinese character is xie han zi. Okay, xie han zi is write Chinese character. Now try to say, write character. Write character. It is xie zi. Write xie zi. Xie zi. Okay, try to say, write name. Write name. See any one of you still remember it? Xie. Xie what? Write name. We've learned it before. Name. It is Xie Ming Zi. Xie Ming Zi. Mo Ying Ming Zi Yi Zi. Okay. Ming Zi. Read after me, please. Ming Zi. It means name. So, right name is Xie Ming Zi. Xie Ming Zi. Now try to say one Chinese character. One Chinese character. Is it Yi Han Zi? Yi Han Zi. We need a measure word between. So it is Yi Ge Han Zi. Ge is a very useful general measure word. Okay. Yi Ge Han Zi. Then how to say how many Chinese characters? How many Chinese characters? It is how many? How to say that? It's ji ge, yes, ji ge han zi, ji ge han zi. And try to say learn Chinese character. Learn Chinese character. It is xue han zi, xue, xue. It means to learn, to study, okay? 学汉字, 西语学, okay, 学汉字. And one character, not 汉字, one character, just 字, it is 一个字, 一个字. And how many characters? 几个字, very good. Now let's move on to next new word, which is 怎么? 怎么自恩,怎么,怎么,怎么 is neutral tone, neutral tone, it means how, how, 怎么, read after me please, 怎么, 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 how, so for example, how to write is 怎么写, how to write is 怎么写, and how to eat is 怎么吃? Yes, 怎么吃? Next one, last new word is 读, which means to read, to read. Okay, read after me. 读, 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 it means to read. So, read Chinese characters is 读汉字。读汉字, so anything you want to read, you just put it after 读, okay? 读 plus a noun means read something, read something. And read book is 读书. 书 is a noun we've seen before. It means book. 食物, 书, 读书 means read book, read book. Okay, now let's try to read it from the start, each for twice. Okay, three, two, one. 写, 写, 汉字, 汉字, 字, 字, 怎么, 怎么, 读, 读. Very good. Now let's move on to the text. I will read and please listen carefully. 你会写汉字吗? 我会写。这个字怎么写? 对不起,这个字我会读,不会写。OK, okay, now let's see. First sentence is 你会写汉字吗? 
Ni hui xie hui structure appeared again, which means can do something. Hui xie can write. Hui xie han zi can write Chinese. And ma means this is a question. You can you write Chinese characters? And B said, wa hui xie. I can. I can write. I can write. Wa hui xie. And zhe zi zan ma xie. 这个 means this. 个 is a very general, general measure word. And please pay attention to the 个 here. It is a neutral tone, neutral tone. Okay, 这个, not 这个, it's 这个. Okay, 这个字怎么写? This character, how to write it? <coughs> and how to write? Zan ma xie? How to write? Zan ma xie? Zhe ge zi. And B answered, Dui bu qi. Still remember this word? Dui bu qi. It means, sorry, sorry. Dui bu qi. And bu is a neutral term, okay? Neutral term too. And let's see. Zhe ge zi, wo hui du. This character, I can read. Bu hui xie. Okay, I can read. Wo hui du. Bu hui is the negative form of hui. Bu hui, I can't write. Okay, it means sorry, I can read this word, but I cannot write it. Okay, now let's try to read it from the start. Three, two, one. Ni hui xie han zi ma? Wo hui xie. 这个字怎么写? 对不起, 这个字我会读, okay, now I will be A and you will be B. Three, two, one. 你会写汉字吗? 这个字怎么写? 好,very okay, good. Now let's switch the role. I will be A, I will be B and you will be A. Three, two, one. 我会写 对不起, 这个字我会读, 不会写。Okay, these are all for today's text. Now let's move on to our language point. The first one is the modal verb hui, which means can be able to do something. It actually indicates the, you, the ability you acquired through learning. Okay, by learning, you acquired an ability, and we can say hui, hui. And hui, the, sub, uh, the structure of hui is the subject plus hui and plus a verb, right? Hui zuo mo shi. Hui do something. Hui do something. And the negative form of it is to plus a, is to add a bu before it, before it. Okay, now let's see the examples. First one, first example here is wo hui xie han zi. Wo hui xie han zi. I can write Chinese characters. What is the subject? Hui can. Xie means write, and Hanzi is the object for xie. I can write Chinese characters. Okay, let's see second example. Wo bu hui zuo zhong guo cai. I can't cook Chinese dish. Let's see. Wo is the subject. We, wo is the one who is doing this thing. Wo bu hui, bu hui, bu wu bu, bu hui. It means I can't, right? It is the negative form of hui. And zuo, zhong guo cai, zuo, make something. Zuo cai, cook. And zuo zhong guo cai, to cook Chinese dish. I cannot cook Chinese dish. Wo bu hui zuo zhong guo cai. Okay, last one is a question. 
Mi mama hui shuo han yu ma? Your mother, can she speak Chinese? Okay, the subject for this sentence is mi mama, which is a little bit longer. And hui, can shuo han yu speak Chinese? And we put a ma after it, which makes it a, makes it a question. So we can see, if you want to ask about or question about, Hui bu hui, can or not, then we just need to put a ma after this sentence. Okay, ma, someone hui something, ma, somebody hui something, ma. This is the structure. For example, ni hui shuo han yu ma, right? Can you speak Chinese? Ni hui shuo han yu ma. This is the structure of the modal verb hui. It is really easy. Okay, now let's move on to next one is sentences with an adjectival predicate, which means which means the adjectives can be the predicate in a sentence. So in Chinese, in Chinese, the adjectives can be a predicate, but there is an there is a condition. There is a condition. There should be a an adverb of degree before the adjective, okay? Just like the structure showed here. The subject plus an adverb of degree plus an adjective. Then at this moment, in this situation, this part is the predicate of the sentence without the verb, okay? Now let's see the example. First example is 我很好 I'm very good. 我很好. In English, I am very good. There is an M between I and very good. But in Chinese, we can see 我很好. There's nothing in between 我 and 很好, right? 我很好. And 很, we said before, it means very quiet, which is an adverb of degree. 我很好. Next one. 我妈妈的汉语不好。我妈妈的汉语不好. The subject of this sentence is a little bit long, which is 我妈妈的汉语。我妈妈的汉语 means my mother's Chinese, okay? My mother's Chinese. And the adverb of degree here is 不. Actually, this is the negative form of this structure. So in negative form of this structure, we will replace the adverb of degree with bu. Okay, just replace it. No adverb of degree. We just put bu in this position and then put the adjective after it. So, 我妈妈的汉语不好. My mother's Chinese is not good. It's not good. Okay, the last example. 中国菜很好吃. 中国菜 很好吃. Chinese dish is very delicious. 很, again, the adverb of degree. Okay, 好吃 means delicious. So Chinese dish is very delicious. And pay attention, pay attention. There must be an adverb of degree before the adjective when you want the adjective act as an predicate. For example, like this. 我很好, I am very good, I'm good. You cannot say 我好 in Chinese. That is not right. You must put an adverb of degree before the adjective 好. You can say 我很好 instead of 我好, okay? This is the sentences with an adjective of predicate. Really easy. Just focus, just pay attention to the adverb of degree or the 不, okay? Next one is the interrogative pronoun 怎么? 怎么, which means how, how. It is used to ask about the manner of an action. How this action happened? How is this action accomplished? For example, 这个汉字怎么读? 怎么读 means how to read it, right? How to read it. How to read this Chinese character. How to read it. Okay, now let's see another one. 你的汉语名字,你的汉语名字,汉语名字 means Chinese 
name and ni the Hanyu means means your Chinese name. Okay, this is the subject of the, this whole sentence. And let's see. 怎么写? How to write? 写 is write. We just learned it today. So we can see the structure of 怎么? The interrogative pronoun 怎么 is 怎么 plus a verb after it. Okay? 怎么 plus a verb. Okay, I will write it bigger here. 怎么 plus a verb. This is the structure of it. Okay? Now, last one. Let's see. 这个字怎么写? How to write this Chinese character? 怎么写? 怎么 plus a verb? 写. And, okay, try to remember another in interrogative pronoun we've learned before, which means what? It is 什么, right? 什么. One is 怎么, one is 什么. Okay, 什么 means what? And 怎么 means how? And the differences between these two, the biggest one is 怎么 plus a verb and 什么 plus a noun. Okay, after 什么, there is, there is always a noun. We are asking about what thing. And after 怎么, how, we will put a verb after it. Now let's move on to the next part, which is answer the question according to the actual situation. Okay, so first question. 你会说汉语吗? 你会说汉语吗? Try to answer it. Okay, 你会说汉语吗? This means can you speak Chinese? So the answer is 我会说汉语, or 我不会说汉语, but since this is already lesson, you've already learned five lessons, so you already can speak Chinese, right? So, 我会说汉语. Next, 你会写汉字吗? 你会写汉字吗? Okay, I believe most of you can write. Even some of you think that you can't write, but still you can write E, right? E1 in Chinese. So, 我会写汉字, or 我不会写汉字. In this sentence, we are using the 会 structure. Okay, next one. 你会做中国菜吗? 你会做中国菜吗? Okay, the answer is 我会做中国菜 or 我不会做中国菜. Very good. Next one. 你有汉语名字吗? 有 means have, so 你有汉语名字吗? Do you have Chinese name? 我有汉语名字 or 我没有汉语名字, okay? Last question. 你会写你的汉语名字吗? If you have. 你会写你的汉语名字吗? Okay, the answer is 我会写 or 我不会写. Okay, now let's move on to the next part. Let's do some exercises. So first one. 我们都会, we, do means all, all, so 我们都会 means we all can do something. So after 会, we should put a verb, right, verb. So let's try to fill in the verbs here. Verbs today we've learned, so first we can speak Chinese, we can write Chinese characters, and we can cook Chinese dish. Okay, let's try to fill in the blanks. First one, 我们都会说汉语 is okay, and 我们都会写汉字, and 我们都会做中国菜. There are so many different answers. You can put in anything you want. Okay, next one, 中国菜很 中国菜, the subject, and here is an 很, which means very, is an adverb of degree. 
and we can put what after it? An adjective, right? Let's try to put an adjective. 中国菜, it is a dish, so it can, we can use 好吃 to describe it. So, 中国菜很好吃,很好吃. And 很好吃 is acting as an predicate in this sentence. Okay, next one. 他会做 what? 做 means to make. And today we've learned a special expression of 做, which is 做菜, right? 他会做菜, which means he can cook. And let's see, it looks like a Chinese bowl. Maybe he's cooking Chinese dish. So we can still put a 中国菜 in this blank. Okay, last one. 这个汉字我会 what? 不会 what? Okay, another way. We can put verbs after hui, right? So you can say 我会写不会读 or 我会读不会写 读 means read, 写 means write, okay? Now let's move on to the next part which is the collocation in disyllabic words. Collocation in disyllabic words. Disyllabic words are really important parts in Chinese characters, okay? So if you can read them properly, you can read Chinese really smooth. If you can read them properly, you can read Chinese really smooth. Okay, let's see. These four new, these four words, some of them you already know. First one is cafe, which means coffee, cafe. And we can see here there are four tables, four tables, which is the, which is the, which indicates the pitch of the tone, okay, from one to five and we can see the first tones are on the highest pitch highest pitch almost five fifth part fifth pitch okay cafe it means coffee next one is Yuan. it means park park okay park Yuan. 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 read up to me Yuan. Yuan, it means park. And we can see the first tone is still the highest A and the second tone is rising up, a rising up. It rises from the two to the fifth to the fourth. From two to four, it is rising. And the third tone, let's see, the third one is Ji Chang. Ji Chang. Okay, anybody still remember when we first learned the third tone? The picture of the third tone pitch is, it looks like this. It looks like this. It is two, one, four. Right? The pitch is, the pitch dropped from two to one and this, it rises up to four. But here it is two, one, two, or say two, one, one. It more looks like two, one, one. So actually, this is the um, this is the half third tone. When the third tone is in the collocation of other tones, it will change to half third tone. Okay, so it is not ji chang. It is ji chang. We will read it as ji chang in daily life. Okay, read after me, please. Ji chang, ji chang. It means airport. Ji chang, ji chang. Okay, last one is 车站, it means station. 车站, 车, 直安站, 车站. Okay, we can see there is nothing special, just the highest pitch for first tone and the rapidly dropped one for the first fourth tone. So the only thing we need to pay attention to is the change of third tone. We will change it to half third tone, okay? Now let's move on to next one, next part. Let's practice. 
read up to me, okay? Don't pay too much attention on the meaning of it. We are just using these pronunciations, these pinyins to practice, okay? So first one, 今天, 今天, 今年, 今年, 精彩, 精彩. Pay attention to it, it is a third tone. We need to read it as a half third tone, okay? 精彩. Next one, 车票, 车票. Okay, we can see there are nothing special about all the other, other groups, other tones. So let's focus on to the third tone line. So next one is 操场. 操场, 吃凹, 操, 吃昂, 场, 操场, 操场, read it as the half the tone. Next one, manager, 经理, 经理, 经理. Last one is, 开始, 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 not 开始, it's 开始, 开始, like two, one, one. 是, 是, it's like this. Okay, this is the third tone when it is in a collocation of disorder chords. Let's move on to next part, which is the strokes of Chinese characters for today. First one is 撇折, 撇折, we can see there are a left falling first, right, left falling, and then a, a turning, it turned, okay? Try to write it with me, left falling and turn it, left falling and turn it. Let's see the example. First one in mu, mu of shama, okay, shama, mu. You can see mu is written like this, and this part is, this part is the pie zhe, left falling turning, left falling to turning. And next one is dong. Which means east. The um dong. It is written like this. And we can see this part is the left falling to turning. And then, and then a vertical hook. And then a two dots. Two dots. This part is the left falling to turning. Pie zhe. Next one is slanting hook. Xie go slanting hook. It is written like this, slanting hook. Don't write it like this, okay? It is wrong, it is slanting hook, slanting hook. Let's see the example. First one is 我, I, me. This part is the slanting hook, let's see. It is written like this, first left falling and then a horizontal and then a vertical hook. And then this thing we are going to learn Next, which means T, rising, rising, and then a slanting hook, and then a left falling dot. This part is the slanting hook. Next is Tian, which means money, left falling, many horizontals, and let's see, slanting hook here, and left falling and the dot, slanting hook. Let's see, last stroke we are going to learn today is Ti, Te Ti. It is written in this direction, okay? Right, rising up, rising up. It looks a little bit like the mark of second tone, okay? Rising up. Let's see. So in Wu here, there is the Ti. Next is Da. To beat, to hit, let's see it. First a short horizontal, and then a vertical hook, and then a T rising, and then these things. This part is T. Okay, let's write it again. First one is pie zhe, left falling to turning, left falling to turning, pie zhe. Next one is the slanting hook, xie go, and last one is T rising. Now let's move on to our single component characters. First one is dong, which means the, the east, opposite to the west. It actually means 
where the sun rises at the ancient time and now it means the east, the east. Let's see the, mm, the order of writing the strokes. First one, we will write the write a horizontal at the upper structure of this word and then a left falling to turning and then a vertical hook and then two dots. Try to write it with me. Horizontal, left falling to turning and then vertical hook and two dots. Horizontal, left falling to turning, vertical hook, two dots. Horizontal, left falling to turning, vertical hook, and then two dots. This is Dong East. Next one is Wo. Wo. It means me, me. Actually, or originally, it looked like a weapon, a weapon. And this part of Wo actually is the weapon. Okay. And Try to write it with me. Let's see the order of this stroke. First one is a left falling, which is really not that. Um, it is really like a horizontal, and then a horizontal, true horizontal, and then a vertical hook, and then a T rising, and then a slanting hook and then a left falling and then a dot. This one is a little bit complicated, so try to practice with me. First, a short left falling and then a longer horizontal up below it and then a vertical hook and then a rising, rising, okay? This rising must cross the vertical hook and then a slanting hook and then a left falling and then a dot. Try to write it with me again. Left falling, horizontal, vertical hook, a rising, and then a slanting hook, left falling dot. Again, left falling, horizontal, vertical hook, rising, left slanting hook, left falling dot. Again, left falling, horizontal, vertical hook, rising, slanting hook, left falling dot. Okay, this is Huo, how to write Huo. Next one is Xi. Xi means west, opposite to Dong. Okay, a shape, a shape like a bird's nest at the ancient time. And now it looks like this, this. Now let's see the stroke order. First one, a not very long, but not very short horizontal, and then a vertical. And then a horizontal turning hook, and then a left falling, and then a vertical turning curved one, and then write a horizontal to close it. Okay, try to write it with me. Horizontal, left falling, horizontal. Okay, write it with me again. It, this one is not that complicated. It is easy to write. And please, this horizontal shouldn't be longer than this one, okay? This one is shorter than this part, this part, okay? Shorter. This one is shorter, this one is longer, okay? This is C West, C West. Okay, the last part of today's lesson is the is the structure of Chinese characters. There are single component and compound structures, okay? So for example, these three are the single, single component, single components, okay? And these are compound, really easy to see. You can see this one, Zhen, Wu, and Zhong, we can see the strokes, they are crossing to each other, they are connected, right, connected. But this one, Ni, Ni, this, I will write it bigger. I can easily separate these, this word to two parts, right? This part and this part. And for Zuo, Zuo, which means to make, to produce. Okay, let's see. 
I can separate it into how many parts? Three parts, right? This one, this one, and this one. So we can see it is really easy to, to, to see the differences between the single and compound structures in Chinese. So these are really easy to, to separate them into different parts. Okay, and in the compound characters, compound component characters, we can see there are radicals, radicals, okay, there are radicals. And we are going to learn the radicals later in the later classes, okay? So these are all for today's class. Thanks for listening and please practice writing and reading after class. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Bye-bye.